Hello, my lovely friends. It is so nice to be back. Um, if you are a regular viewer, you will notice that I did not post a video last month and there was a very good reason for it. Um, I had a little bit of a, a family emergency, which I will talk about in just a minute. Um, sorry, I keep glancing at my notes. Um, my name is Christy Archer of Christy Archer Designs. I am a bag maker and knitwear designer, and this is a mostly knitting podcast. I do sewing and cro uh, cross stitch and a few other things as well, so occasionally those will be sprinkled in, but this is mostly a knitting podcast, and I am so grateful to have you here today visiting with me, um, and uh i lost my train of thought i apologize um oh something that i'm not very good at and i hope to get better with is please uh like this video if you enjoy it and subscribe for more videos um, i would love to get to know you you can comment and i will chat with you um i am behind on comments and i do apologize <clears throat> Again, I have had a bit of a family of emergency, and so um, that is uh, I, about a month and a half, month, three weeks ago, I got a call early one morning from my sister that said my mother had been rushed to the hospital. So um, this was somewhat of a really big shock. My mother is extremely healthy. Um, so with the exception of she was a very, a, a long time smoker, cigarette smoker. And so she is no longer. Um, she had um, heart failure and uh, she was unable to breathe, so they rushed her to the hospital. And when I got the call, of course, I did everything necessary. Actually, my husband, thank you, Sean, have the most wonderful husband. Um, we really did not have the money for me to fly across country and spend a month there, but my husband made it happen, and I'm so, so thankful for that. So. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean, for that. Um, but anyway, so I made it across country and um, she is out of the hospital. It, it, it will take her about three months to recuperate. Um, we are expecting, so she is improving. She's up and walking around. Um, in the midst of all of this, she was my brother's, I have an amazing family, my brothers bought my mother a new home and um, they surprised her with it on Mother's Day. So um, right after she was surprised with the house uh, is when she had the heart failure and <laughs> um, we were, of course, laughing about it later, saying that they gave her a heart attack, <laughs> which is not what happened, obviously, but um, so they bought her a new house and, or bought her a house, and while I was there, I went to check the house out because when they bought the house, um, somebody was using it as a, um, they were living in it, but basically they were, it's a really small house, and they were living in it while they were building their house. So they just had boxes and boxes and boxes in the house. So it was basically being used to storage slash living. So they couldn't really tell much about it when they bought it. Um, long story short, they went in after I got in to get a look at it. Um, I called my brothers and said that some stuff needed to be done. So my amazing brothers, um, went in and gutted it and completely made it brand new. It is absolutely gorgeous. So, mother goes into the, uh, she gets a new, my brother's buy her a new house. She goes into the hospital. I get there. They start renovations on the new house and um, 
we are, my, I'm staying with my sister. My mother and I are staying with my sister and her family. And we are, you know, getting her back on her feet and everything. So long story short, um, her house is now ready. I don't think she has moved in yet. Um, I think she's still a little nervous about being there on her own but she'll get there. Fortunately, it's right across the street from my aunt, literally right across the street from my aunt. So that's really good. She has somebody um, there to check on her and everything. And like I said, she's improving every day. So enough about that. Uh, I know normally that stuff is left to the end, but I wanted to kind of give everybody an update as to where I've been. So with that said, I know it's been two months since I have last podcasted, but I really don't have a ton to show. I have I have a lot to show. I probably have about a normal month's worth of showing to share with you guys today. So with that said, let's get straight into FOs. My first FO that I'm going to share with you guys is a top that I just kind of made up as I went and um, I'm calling it my confetti tea, and the reason is, is because I kind of took the concept of a round yolk and a raglan and meshed them together, and I wanted this to be, I didn't want it to be, um, like I didn't want the the eyelets to be perfectly lined up. So what I did is, and I'm hoping you guys will be able to tell, I did random yarn overs to create what looks like confetti that has been splashed onto my t-shirt. So this is my confetti tee. And I had so much fun knitting this because I just kind of made it up as I went along and I just, when I felt like throwing in a yarn over, I threw in a yarn over. I do have a formula for how I did it. If you guys think this is something you would be interested in as a pattern, let me know because I did write out the formula as I did it. Um, and it was so much fun. And I think it would be fun for those that are, um, that don't mind being a little, um, it, it's not a row by row instructions per se. It's a row by row instructions with more or less like a formula as to you place the yarn overs wherever you want, but I tell you approximately where and how to do it. So um, it's kind of fun to be a little creative and just kind of go with the flow. That's kind of hard for me when it comes to knitting and sewing because I'm such a perfectionist, but anyway. Okay, so this is done out of Knit Picks Comfy Fingering, and it has quickly become one of my favorite yarns to work with. It is, if you have ever worked with cotton, cotton can be, um, it can be a little challenging to work with because it doesn't have the bounce and give that wool does. This has a little bit of acrylic in it, um, which you can probably tell. And by the way, everything that I have to show, I have already worn a bunch because I took all of this with me out of town when I went to Florida. So um, these have been worn and washed and thrown in the dryer quite a bit. So they are not... Um, brand new and smooth. They do have a little bit of wear to them already. So if you are curious as to how Knit Picks washes and wear, uh, Knit Picks comfy washes and wears, this is a good example. Um, and I have no problems with it. It is truly a very comfortable tee. Um, so yeah, I can see me making some more of these for sure. So that is my confetti tee, and it has just the slightest bit of an, let's see. No, I did not do an A-line on this. This is a straight fit. So this is a boxy fit, and I did um, short sleeves, obviously. Um, and I did raise it up in the back so that there's neck shaping. 
And so, yeah, that is my confetti tee. Next up, I have a chambray tank top, which I am loving. Again, this is a pattern I just kind of made up as I went along and I finished it and wove in my ends and I was checking it out in the mirror before I clipped my ends and I clipped one of my ends after it had been woven in and I cut I cut the actual garment instead of the thread that was supposed to be snipped. So I have to go back, take this out, rip it back, re-knit that, and then do my three needle bind off again. So I'm calling this my chambray tank and it is a bottom up um, I prefer top down, but I did this one as a bottom up and I um, just decreased to create the shaping here um, and decreased to give a v-neck and then worked one side, worked the other side, or split for sleeves, worked one side, worked the other side. Um, worked the back. Now, I did not, for this, I did a really interesting concept. Instead of doing this and this, the whole thing is worked back and forth. I don't know how to explain it. And I honestly do not see me as writing this up as a pattern because there are so many tank tops out there. What's the point of me writing up another one? I mean, you guys tell me. <laughs> that was just my thinking is that there are so many tank patterns out there. It would be kind of silly, I think, for me to write another one, but I do love this. This is knit out of Knit Picks Cot Lin. It is 50% cotton, 50% linen, if I remember correctly. And this is the chambray colorway. <clears throat> I'm sorry, allergies. I'm getting used to being back in California. Um, so this washes and wears beautifully. It has nice drape. Um, I know a lot of people complain about cotton stretching out and not going back into place. I have not had that issue with any of my cotton knits and I do a lot of cotton knitting. Um, so I say if you're worried about it, try it. Um, being here in California, I have always been partial to cotton long before I ever started knitting. Um, knitting was my first experience with wool. As a matter of fact, I never wore wool or anything before knitting. Um, so I am glad to get back to my roots, so to speak, and working with a fiber that I truly love wearing. Um, so that is that. Um, I don't know that there's anything left to say about that. My next one is something that I did. I believe I finished, yes, I finished this. I started it and finished it while I was in Florida. Um, this is another, um, oops, I am so sorry about that. I hit my camera. Sorry. <laughs> okay, this is another Little Sprout um, top, which is a pattern of mine. And this pattern will be coming out by the end of this month. Fingers crossed. I have, have, let's see, one, two, three. I believe I have three patterns that are done with testing now. And I'm waiting on feedback to come in on those. And then I'm going to get those released. And this is one of them, and I'm pretty sure this one will be released before the end of the month. Um, this is called my Little Sprout, L-I-L -L Sprout. And my mother picked this yarn out for me. She thought this would be a pretty color for me, and it is. I wear coral very well. So this one is done out of um, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton, and the colorway is called Coral. Um, I 
designed this to be a top down. Most of the time, if you see a top like this, it's bottom up. And again, I just prefer knitting top down. So with this, you start with your uh, neck band and then you do the front right shaping and then you scoot over and do the front left shaping and then you work back and forth until you get to where you um, should join to work in the round. Then you go and you do the back shaping and then the other side of the back shaping, knit down and then you join to work in the round and I have this fun little ribbing for the trim down the side and it merges into the trim for the hem and then you do the hem and you're done. So there's no seaming or anything like that. And I like doing top down because if I have just a little bit of yarn left, I'd rather use it on this than to have a little ball of yarn lying around. So again, this is uh, designed to be higher in the back. Um, so when you do it, there are actually fewer stitches in the back to start with but by the time you're done, you end up with the same number of stitches in the back as you have in the front. So that is my coral little sprout, and I'm really enjoying that. And again, 100% cotton. Um, I love the fact that I can just throw these things in the washer, throw them in the dryer, and hang them up, and I'm ready to wear them again. Okay, something I had started before I left for Florida and worked on it a good bit in Florida, but um, I actually finished it here. And I love, 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 love this garment. This is my um, spring fling pattern, which again, I hope will come out by the end of this month. Um, and that pattern name may change. I haven't decided yet, but this is a spring fling cardigan, but I've done this in once again, nitpicks, comfy fingering. And oh my goodness, my mother and my sister were both dying over this. It is so comfortable. Um, worked on this on the plane and there and back and I love it. So this is Knit Picks Comfy. This is Parchment and this is Clarity, which I am so happy with the way Clarity came when I got it. It's one of those that looks different everywhere I have seen it. And so I'm very, very happy with the way the color is. It um, almost looks like a pale white blue, blue white online but it definitely has more color than that so i'm very pleased with it um but this is a top down raglan and you pick up for the collar band and then you pick up for the sleeves and knit down and finish it off this is this has been worn a lot it is so comfortable and you guys know if you've if you are not new here you know how much I love my cardigans. So um, that is my spring fling cotton version of the um, striped cardigan. So that is it for FOs. And now we are go on, we will, I will go on to whips. So for my first work in progress, it is being housed in, which I'm going to do a real quick shop update. I have obviously not been around to do a shop update, um, so I now have a shop update for you guys, and I have a bag collection that is made out of batik material. And I love batik. It has a boho beachy vibe to it. And I just thought this was the perfect time of year to do a boho beachy themed bag collection. So 
I have this, which is my blue batik. I didn't get creative with names. My brain is kind of <laughs> not running on all cylinders today or right now with everything that I've been through. So this is creatively named the blue batik. And these are ready to ship. I already have these made. Um, I only have, I only made four of each bag. Um, and I, ha I still have all four of these as of right now. And then I have four of my green batik, which I thought this was just beautiful. It reminded me of walking through a forest with a real bright, sunny blue sky. It has the green and the leaves and then the blue poking through. I just thought this was beautiful. So that is my batik collection that is ready to ship. There are four of each bag. Um, and I hope if you guys are looking for a bag that you will run out and grab one. Um, I am going to start saving all of my money to refurnish my house. Um, for those of you that don't know, we just recently moved out to California. I bought my forever home and I'd like to get it furnished the way I want it furnished. Right now, I just have kind of like a mismatch of furniture. It's not a mismatch, but it's furniture that I bought specifically for other houses in the past. And I'd really like to do furniture just for this house. So anyway, that all of these funds are going towards the house and of course yarn. Um, <laughs> gotta have yarn while I'm decorating. Um, so the inside of the bag is done out of a natural and the bottom of the bags are done out of a canvas dock natural. Um, these are real easy to throw in the washer and dryer. I pride myself on superior craftsmanship. As you can see here, my seams match up and my top stitching and everything. I Sewing is actually my what most of my portfolio is as far as ex life experience and jobs and everything. So um, you'll never get a bag that is not made very well. <laughs> so this is the green batik, again, very creatively named. And then I also have a new collection that is available for pre-order. And I only have one of those to show right now um, because I did get two orders on the other two and they have already shipped out. So this is my secret garden collection and it is, um, it is made out of high quality quilters cotton, if you guys are familiar with Moda. Um, so this one has, this is my blue secret garden and I also have a green secret garden that has little birds and flowers. And then I have a beautiful pink secret garden that is florals. Um, it's a really unique floral pattern. You'll I'll go to my website and look at the pictures um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The pink is, it's really, really pretty. My daughter was like, ooh, I like that one. So um, I'm a fan of blue. So I'm happy that this one is still here. I apologize. I've got something in my eye. Okay, that is my rant on shop updates. I apologize for that interruption. Now let's get back to whips. My first whip to share is actually a test knit that I am doing for Tara of A Loop Through a Loop. And if you guys have not checked her out, she has a, um, YouTube channel where she does a podcast as well. So hi, Tara. Um, this is her blue Christmas pattern, and I believe it has already been released or something. So she said it was okay to share. So I'm going to go ahead and share what I have done. This is a bottom up pattern. So you start at the bottom and um, you do a really nice three inch rib. And I got 
kind of sidetracked when I was doing the back rib and made it a little bit longer by accident, but I thought I like a longer back hem anyway, so I just kept it instead of ri uh, ripping back an inch of, of knitting. So this is actually an inch longer in the back. And these nice four inch stripes, now mine are actually four and a half inches right now because um, again, this is 100% cotton and cotton, when you wash it and dry it, it shrinks up a good bit in length. So I made my stripes a good bit longer. Um, plus I wanted my side length a little bit longer because I'm gonna be wearing these with some black biker shorts. So anyway, this is made out of uh, Hobby Lobby's, um, well, let me grab the, it's sugar wheel, sorry. Okay. It's Hobby Lobby's Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids. And the colors I'm using are Ink Jet, which is obviously the black. And then the white or the uh, cream is Gardenia. Let's see, soft, what is the color? Soft Gardenia. Um, so, I am loving these yarns. It's kind of a DK weight. Um, the pattern is written for fingering and for Erin, but she gives you instructions and videos and everything on how to convert the pattern weight. I mean, I'm sorry, the yarn weight. So I decided to give that a try and I've done a DK weight and it has worked out beautifully. Um, I have separated for the sleeves and I'm working on the front first and I have done my shoulder shaping and neck shaping and for the right side and then I will be heading over to the left side to get all of that done and it's done with German short rows and then I will pick up the back and do the same thing to the back and then on to the sleeves and the sleeves you pick up um, at the armhole and just work down. So again, there's no seaming, which I love. And I have a very strong feeling that, sorry, I'm trying to get it all situated before I put it back. Um, this is going to be a much, much loved garment. It is, uh, I love cotton, guys. <laughs> I love cotton, and when I'm knitting with wool, I love non-superwash. So, that is my first whip, and I am super excited. I hope to have this done by the, by the end of the weekend, beginning of next week. So, you guys could possibly see me wearing this next uh, podcast. Um... Okay, now one other thing I wanted, well, I'll get to that in a minute. All right, my next and final whip that I'm going to discuss is a pattern that I'm doing with Hobby Lobby's Yarn Bee Blended Bliss in the colorway clay. And I am enjoying this project so much. Um, this is Let's see, this is a cotton, let's see, where is it? This is a cotton acrylic polyamide blend, and I'm trying to read, I think it's 50, I can't read the percentages, it's like 50 something percent cotton, 30 percent acrylic, and 9 percent polyamide, maybe Maybe if I hold that up close, you guys can see that. <laughs> um, there are 443 yards, so it's a light fingering. And I started off doing my uh, spring fling cardigan, um, but all in one color. And then I decided that I would finish it off with garter instead of with ribbing. Um, so sort of like a combination of um, a spring fling and what is my I apologize guys hold on I was trying to Let's 
sorry, I was trying, I cannot remember the name of the other pattern, and I love it so much. Um, where is it? Oh, there it is. Brooke Green Cardi. Um, and this is by Alyssa, well, Fogbound Knits. I can't remember Alyssa's last name. So this is like a combination of the Brooke Green Cardi and my Spring Fling Cardi. Um, and I am really enjoying this. So I have finished up the hem and I will be picking up for the neckband and then on to the sleeves. And that is, again, living in my green batik bag. So, that is it for whips. Next up is dream knitting. It's not dream knitting, it's planned knitting. So, planned knitting. Okay, my first planned knitting project, and I am really, really, really excited about this. Okay, I have had this pattern saved in my favorites for a while, and I contacted the designer, and she was so sweet to give me this pattern and to give me an extra to give away to one of you guys. So if you guys will leave me a comment um, in the comment box, you will be um, I'm sorry, I just realized I never did this. I'll have to do two giveaways next podcast. Um, so if you guys want to comment below, you will be registered for the duet pattern by Kristen Finlay. Kristen Finlay. And I love this tea. She has done some very creative arm shaping instead of being at the seam, the arm shaping is right here, which I love. And then you actually bind off right here before you pick up right here and it has a little decorative. It's almost, it's almost like a garter ridge, but it's, to me it's neater than a garter ridge. So I love the way that has been finished off there and then little tiny sleeves and everything. So I'm so excited to get started on this. The duet and the yarns that I have lined up for it are, I know, Yarn B. You guys are shocked by now, right? <laughs> this is Yarn B Utopia, sorry, Yarntopia. And this is actually 100% acrylic, which normally I would not do 100% acrylic, but if you guys are ever out at Hobby Lobby and you buy Hobby Lobby yarn, feel this yarn. It is silky and it is going to have gorgeous drape. It is not normal acrylic at all. It feels like, it feels like bamboo. If you guys are familiar with the way bamboo feels, it feels like 100% bamboo. Um, and I am very, very excited about this. Okay, the colorway I have to do this in is hummus, and this will be the top portion. And then the bottom portion is anchor which is a nice heathery i love the heather look that it has to the yarn on this so hummus and anchor will be used for my duet top yay i am excited about that and maybe whoever wins the pattern if i don't get to it before then maybe we can knit it together that would be so much fun to knit that with somebody. Or maybe we could do a duet knit along. We should do a duet, duet knit along. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do, uh, let's see, what month? <laughs> I don't even know what month we're in. We're in June, we're the end of June. Why don't we say for the month of July, anybody that wants to join in, we'll do a duet knit along and I will give away the duet pattern 
it may be in the middle of the, the knit along, but that's okay. Um, I'll give it to somebody. This shouldn't, this should not be a long project. Um, the yarn weight I think is, I'm pretty sure, and I'm sorry, my air keeps turning off and on. I'm pretty sure this is a, a worsted. It's either, no, that's not worsted. Is that worsted? That may be DK. Anyway, it can't take long to make that. So let's do a duet knit along for the month of July. That'll be fun. Okay, and then I am going, uh, something else that I have lined up to do is another one of my patterns, uh, Party of Eight. This one has already been released for those of you that don't know. And this is a free pattern. This was my very first pattern. I've had pretty darn good reviews, if I do say so myself. Um, I do have one thing that has been brought to my attention that I need to fix. And now that I'm back home, I'm going to get that fixed and re um, send it out to everybody. Um, but I'm going to be making this again in, and you guys will start seeing a pattern here really soon with something, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, comfy fingering, that's not the, <laughs> that's not the pattern, though it is a pattern. Um, this is with my, uh, with comfy fingering, um, in black, and I believe this is swan. Oh, nope, they're just referring to it as white. So black and white. Um, the theme you guys may have been noticing is a lot of the black and tones of white. Before I started knitting, my entire wardrobe was basically black, white, denim, or you know, blues, chambrays, things like that. Uh, grays, neutral tones. I very seldom did I ever wear color. And then I started knitting, and knitting in color is just so much fun. And I am enjoying wearing color. That being said, I feel like I've lost a little bit of my style with knitting and my, my personal sense of style. And so I am going to start knitting with some blacks and whites and I will still knit in colors as well, but you guys will probably start seeing a lot of black and whites. So that is another project that is to be done soon. I forgot to discuss one FO with you and there's a reason for it. It was put in a different place. <laughs> So, let's get back to, to FOs, the beginning of the podcast, for just a moment. I purchased a sewing pattern by, it's so, oh goodness, um, I can't remember what the name of the company is the okay i think so design uh i think sew design and they are on etsy and if you put in mocha m-o-c-h-a all of their um women's and i believe they have children's patterns too will pop up they actually have i think four different etsy stores um, they do bags and home goods and they have all kinds of things. And they actually have a website as well. I don't know what the web address is. I'll put it down in the uh, description box below for you guys. Um, so you can go directly to the website. Anyway, I bought this pattern called um, the Mural Tunic and Dress. So you can make it either a tunic length or a dress length. I bought this pattern and was, um, if you guys are unfamiliar with PDF sewing patterns, you print them out from home on standard paper, and then you tape the paper together. This is actually what I used to do. I did it for children's designs. And so I was a children's clothing designer, pattern designer, maker. So I know how all of this works. And for some reason, I was unable to get it to print properly. And so 
because I was unable to get it to print properly, and let me make a side note, the seller has been amazing. Finally got it to print properly through my iPad, could not get it to print properly through my computer, but there's probably a reason for that, and I'll get into that in a minute. So anyway, Mocha Mural Tunic, uh, Muriel, sorry, sorry, I can't talk English. Um, Muriel Tunic and Dress. And because I was having trouble getting it to print properly, I just kind of took what I could get and ran with it. Again, I know how to sew, I know how to design patterns. I was just doing it because I was being lazy and didn't want to do the pattern. Again, this goes back to a computer thing that I was dealing with. Long story short, we decided to give my computer to my daughter and all of the programs that I use to design patterns and everything, because I gave my computer to my daughter, because I never use it really anymore, or very seldom, I got rid of all of those programs. And so I didn't have the programs to get on and do it. So I would have had to have been designing with paper and pencil. So because of that, I thought I'll just buy the pattern. So long story short, didn't get the pattern to work. I did now, but before I made this, I did not. So this is my version of the Muriel. I knew I was not gonna make it tunic length and I knew I was not going to make it. This is very, very, very A-lined. I mean, it goes way out. And I knew that I wasn't going to be making it that wide. I was going to A-line it a little bit, but not to the extreme that this was. So I just really liked the neckline of it. So I made, uh, used the neckline. Sorry, it has yarn on it now. I lint rolled it beforehand. Okay, so I used the same neckline for the front and I cut it in on the side so it wasn't as extremely flared. I did use the sleeve pattern for the most part. Um, and then for the back, I decided, now the back of this one is just one solid piece as far as the pattern, the way the pattern is designed. I decided to break it up and do a panel up here, do a pleat right here. And so that gave me a little more wiggle room in this um, back shoulder area. For those of you that are new here, I have, um, I was put on some medicine that made me gain a lot of weight. And for some reason, the weight seems to be up in this area um, from like here to under my breast. It's just like, I've, this is, it's a weird place to have gained the weight. But anyway, I'm in the process of losing it. So yay. Um, so anyway, this is my, my version of the Muriel tunic and I made it in a top length. Again, I knew I wasn't gonna be doing a tunic length, so I made it short. And I changed the hem. Instead of doing a folded hem, I did a, um, I did a um, facing for the hem. So I just cut the same shape for the bottom and created a facing and just finished it off because that's the way the, um, the neckline was finished off. So that was how I decided to finish off the bottom as well. And then the sleeves have a really large fold hem. So I just thought it all kind of worked together um, to create a finished look. So I enjoyed doing that facing for the hem instead of doing a folded hem. Um, and then the other thing that I knew I was going to change is the way the hemline is done on this. It's done, the pattern itself is cut straight across at the bottom, which makes it have like, it's called a shark bite hem. Um, so it's a little bit, hangs a little bit longer on the sides. And I didn't want that. I wanted a more traditional hem. So in order to do a traditional hem, you actually 
taper it up on the sides a little bit so that when it hangs, it hangs even all the way around. Um, so that is my last FO and I actually wore this yesterday and my husband's like, did you buy a new top? I said, no, I just made this. So he really liked that, which means a lot to me. And um, especially for it being basically a wearable muslin, and for those of you that don't sew, a muslin is basically like your first go. You don't plan on really wearing it. You're just kind of working through the bugs. Um, like next time when I make this, I know that I want my sleeves smaller in circumference. Um, and I may um, angle them a little bit more. I may make the cap a little more um, pronounced so that it hangs down more instead of out. And um, so yeah, I may give it a stronger sleeve cap and smaller circumference. Um, and next time when I make it, I did not use any tape here when I sewed. And because this is on the bias, you're sewing on the bias, it stretched out just ever so slightly. So I'm going to use a basting tape when I go back and do this neckline. I knew it was gonna be needed, but again, I was just doing this as a run through. Um, but I'm very pleased with the way that it has turned out. And that is my one sewing project for the month. Um, now that I have got this pattern to print out properly, I am going to go back and make it exactly as it has been designed with the exception of the hem. I will do it shorter and um, straight across, which is slightly tapered up, um, but I'm going to do all of this exactly as it has been designed. Um, so hopefully I'll have that to show on the next podcast. All right, hopefully you guys are still with me. And if you are, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe, comment. Um, I'm trying to get better at saying all of that. I always forget. Uh, the last thing, sorry, that I want to share with you guys, and I did not bring my box of yarn, is I bought something that I have been wanting since almost the beginning of my knitting journey, which has been five-ish years, if not longer, maybe longer, maybe going into my sixth uh, year of knitting. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Kim Har Hargraves, Hargreaves, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, she is a knitwear designer and her stuff is just, I aspire to be the knitwear designer that she is. Um, I don't think a lot of people know about her though. Uh, she does books, so she does like collections and I've just never had the money to invest in one of her books but um, I decided to bite the bullet and I bought one of her books off of Amazon. And there are quite a few other books that I wanna get. Her absolute, the one that I love the most, I think I just more or less love the pictures, um, is her Calm series, her Calm collection. Um, but after looking at the patterns between that one and her Haze collection, I thought to start off with, I'll probably get more use out of the Hayes collection. There's one top out of the Calm collection that is very similar to one that's in here, and it's actually my favorite. Favorite, that's what I wanted to make. But um, since there's one that's almost the same in here, I figured I could make the adjustments and um, still make that pattern with this book. Plus this book has a ton of patterns that I'm wanting to make. So I'm going to share with you my Hayes Kim Har Greaves or Graves collection. This has 21 patterns in it. And I think 
can't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was somewhere around the $20 mark. So a dollar a pattern, it's not bad. I've just never had the money to really put into it. But I'm so excited to have this hard copy in my hands. Um, okay, so I'm going to share some of the patterns that I am going to be making. I've already bought the yarn for, and you guys will kind of get more of an idea of my, my sense of style because this is truly my sense of style. Um, okay, this is called the Dusky Pattern. And I will not be wearing it with a belt, but I am going to be getting a long black maxi skirt because to me, this is just the epitome of gorgeousness. Um, this has, oh, I hope you guys can see, it has a button panel, but the button panel stops. So it's almost like a Henley kind of thing. And then you have the panel down here. I love the fact that it is lace. And I'm going to be knitting this out of 100% cotton. Um, I got Paint Box, which is from Lovecrafts, or is on Lovecrafts. I don't think it's by Lovecrafts. I think Lovecrafts just sells it. Um, but anyway, it is a 100% cotton DK. And so I got that to do all of these patterns. And I got everything black except for one design is two colors. And so I got black and white for that. Okay, so that's the dusky pattern that I will be making. I love this pattern and we'll be making it as well. That cardigan is gorgeous, but I don't have the yarn to do that yet. And that's called Leela. Um, for those of you that enjoy crocheting, she has a crochet version of what looks like my little sprout top and I thought that was kind of neat. Um, but I'm not very good at crocheting. Okay, this is the Reflect sweater. Again, I love this little Henley style. Um, and the three-quarter sleeves, so I will be doing that in black. And there are, uh, there are tons of others in here that I'm not showing. I highly recommend you guys check these books out this is the reason, this next pattern is the reason I bought this book. This pattern is to die for. This is called Gasp and it does, it makes me gasp. I love, love this pattern. These to me look like High end, it looks like something you would get from a high end boutique um, couture, I mean, like clothing store. Um, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait. I mean, black with some uh, distressed, ripped up jeans, black boots. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Okay, I cannot remember, I believe, I believe I got the yarn to do this one. This one's called Starlet, Star, Star, Startle, <laughs> sorry. I can't remember if I got the yarn to do that one or not, but I do plan on it if I didn't already. I have to look back at my notes. Um, this one I definitely got the yarn for. This is called Wistful. And again, just classic and elegant and just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I got black yarn to do this, but I think I'm gonna have to go back and get some white yarn as well. I know that's a pale gray that they've used, which is lovely as well. But again, I will not be doing the belt. It'll just be a, a open front cardigan. Okay, this I love. This is called Striking, and it is a tank. They have used um, twill tape for the straps. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use twill tape. I'm, I'm not sure on the straps yet, but I'm definitely making this. And I don't know if you can see, but it has slip stitches to create this kind of ribbed effect. 
Um, love, 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 love that. I cannot remember if I got the yarn to do this, but this is called Sunset, and this is actually reversible. You can wear it with this in the front or back, or you can wear it with the V-shape in the front or back. And I thought that was really, really cute. Once I lose weight, I think this one will look much better right now with me being so broad right here. I don't think it would be very flattering, but hopefully once I lose all of this weight right in here, I will be able to pull this one off. Um, and I love the wide-legged pants with that. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, this is the one that's two colors, and I got black and white to do this. This is not really something that I would normally gravitate towards. Um, it's a little fussy, but I just wanted to knit it. And I know it's something that I will wear. It's just not normally my personal style. Uh, my daughter fell in love with it, so it may be that I just end up knitting it for her. Um because like I said, it really isn't my, I'm not a chevron person. Um, I think if it weren't chevron, maybe if I made it in a solid, because I do like the neckline and the sleeves, I would make it longer. I don't think I'd make it cropped, um, but I don't know. But anyway, I did get the yarn to make that. Um, and that one's called Saran. I'm not sure on that. All right, and then this. This is the other pattern, the pattern in the Calm. It's very similar to the pattern in the Calm that I really wanted the Calm book for. Um, this is called Sweet, and the difference with this, I'm thinking, just from looking at it, and you guys tell me, look up the pattern that's in Calm, it is sleeveless, so it's a sleeveless version of this. And I think I should be able to modify this well enough and figure out how to do, um, because basically the way they finished this off, the neckline is the same way they finished the sleeves off in the other pattern. So this I got, I had already had the yarn for this. It is the same um, clarity blue that I had bought, and I'm going to wear that shirt under this cardigan, and then I have a pair of shorts that are this color. So that was my intention, was to make that as a complete outfit. So that is the sweet pattern, and yeah, I think I can make that happen. And then, Again, I can't remember if I got the yarn to do this. I'm pretty sure I got the yarn to do this to Glimpse Cardigan. I just love all of these laces and everything that she designs with. Um, this is a gorgeous sweater. I haven't got the yarn to do this. Well, actually I do. I may do this because I have yarn left over from where I was dying yarn. Um, so I may do this. I kind of like a, I know that's gray, but with the blue underneath it, it looks kind of like a blue gray. I think a blue gray would be really pretty in that. So, or maybe a pale blue. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is uh, sweet. Once again, is reversible, so you can wear it with the V in the back or in the front, and they show that in the, um, in the other book as well. Just like I said, it's short sleeve versus long sleeve. So that is it for now with my Hayes book. So as you can see, I have a lot of knitting planned. I will probably be good through, I'm so sorry I keep hitting the camera or the table that's holding the camera. I've got one of those arm things holding my phone. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, if you guys have noticed a difference in my filming quality, I decided to use my phone again today. I hope that it works out okay. Um, I know that my lights overhead have a lot of yellow in them. I've been meaning to change them since we moved in. 
Um, so hopefully I can get all of these changed out and get rid of all of this yellow glow. Um, but I guess that's it for now. I tried to keep this short. Um, I think I'm going to start doing my podcasts more often so that they don't get so long. Um, but I definitely had a good bit to cram in. So that is it for today's podcast. Thank you for visiting. Um, again, if you have enjoyed your visit here, please give me a thumbs up. I would love for you to subscribe and leave me a comment. I'm going to get better at replying to the comments, I promise. Um, but it has been great spending time with you. And I hope that you make your day a great one. And I will see you here again next time, hopefully.